A new study published in May 2020 that focused on vegans found that whilst vitamin B12 was well supplemented, there was another nutrient that was, quote, a matter of concern. Researchers compared a vegan diet with a mixed diet and looked at a variety of vitamins and trace elements. They analysed blood and urine samples and evaluated lifestyle questionnaires and dietary protocols and they found that there was no significant difference with regard to vitamin B12, which was present in approximately the same amount in the blood of both groups. Interestingly, both diets investigated revealed a lack of iodine. However, quote, the shortage is clearly more distinct in the vegan variant. Iodine excretion measured in urine samples provides information on how well the body is supplied with the trace element. The majority of the participants had a deficiency, but the deficiency was significantly more pronounced among vegans. In one third of them, the level was below 20 micrograms per litre, the limit defined by the WHO. Anything below this represents a serious shortage. So now let's hear from Dr. Michael Clapper and Dr. Michael Greger as they talk more about iodine. In the base of our neck, we have this gland called our thyroid gland. It puts out a hormone called thyroxin that regulates how quickly our cells burn energy. You want to have just the right amount of thyroxin in your blood. And for the thyroid gland to make thyroxin, here's the molecule of thyroxin. And these four purple globes, these are atoms of iodine. You need four atoms of iodine to assemble every molecule of thyroxin. And if your diet is short of iodine, you are going to be short on thyroid hormone. And I think a significant amount of vegans who have come to me over the years to die, Doc, man, I, I felt great when I first been on this way to eat, but it's been three years now, and man, I don't have the energy. I'm dragging it, man. And what's turning out when you go over their diet, there's been very little iodine in their diet, and what they're looking at is subclinical hypothyroidism. You know, these folks have low thyroid function from iodine deficiency. And I think it's one of the really common causes of vegans failing to thrive. So I want to share with you, if you're doing this for real, make sure you've got an iodine source in your diet. Now, what does that look like? There are sea vegetables, it's wakame. It comes from dried packages, and the uh, best thing to do is put in water, uh, let it soak for a couple of hours, and then throw that soaked gob of it into your soup or your salad, yeah, three times a week, and that will uh, meet your iodine needs quite handily. There is another sea vegetable called arame. Throw it into your soup or your salad three times a week. And finally, there is dulse, also a very rich source of iodine. And again, soak it and uh, throw a tablespoon of it into your super salad three times a week. Now, kelp is a seaweed that is very high in iodine. And if you take too much iodine, you know, a little is good, more must be better. Not so with iodine. You take too much iodine, you will flood your thyroid with iodine. And it will actually depress your thyroid function. You'll create the very thyroid deficiency you're trying to cure uh, with all this iodine. So you don't want to be taking kelp tablets, way too much iodine. If if you do use kelp, get it in a a shaker and just a couple of sprinkles on your salad a couple times a week is all you need. Don't go overboard with the kelp. And when you don't want to take it all is hijiki. It has a real avid uptake of, of arsenic. Now another source of iodine, if you don't want to get into the sea vegetable thing, is a pinch of iodized salt on your vegetables. Oh no, did Dr. Clapper say to use salt on your food? There are people who do need a little extra sodium. And if the amount is really tiny, we're talking, as you see, we're talking about a pinch, literally a pinch. People say, well, I use sea salt and it came from the sea. So it's got lots of iodine. I got that one covered, doc. Actually, you don't. Sea salt does not have iodine. You should be getting 150 micrograms of iodine every day. How do we do that? Um, the healthiest way is uh, to encourage people to find a way to enjoy sea vegetables. If you don't like sea vegetables, then, you know, a half teaspoon of a dulse uh, every day gets all the iodine you need. Um, it's the, it comes in like little purple flakes. You won't even see it or taste it. You sprinkle it on your food and you're fine. Um, or you can do that with arame, same amount. Nori sheets, you know, those like sushi sheets, it tends to have a kind of a mild taste for even people that don't like seaweed may enjoy. Now there's all sorts of like fancy snack varieties. Unfortunately, they typically add um, oil, salt, so you make your own. What I like to do is I paint them with um, pickled ginger juice and then sprinkle some wasabi, cruciferous vegetable, 
Um, and then I just kind of recrisp it up in an oven about 300 degrees for five minutes. And then you have this awesome snack that tastes delicious. And you're eating dark green leafy vegetables for a snack. And, you know, you get all the iodine you need. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.